Hey guys, Tim Coates here, sort of Pascal Coder. In today's video, we're going to be looking at debugging in Lazarus. It's going to be a bit of a beginner's video. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, breakpoints, watches, local variables, and so on. Um, somehow you can see my window here. I've also managed to get rid of my um, object inspector, but don't need it for this video. And what we're going to uh, look at here is a little tiny program that does have some issues in it and hopefully we can use the debugger to look at how we can, you know, step into code, step out of code, uh, inspect variables and so on. So why don't we get started here? So we've got a little program here with um, income, rent, utilities, groceries, and it will basically, you know, calculate the total of my expenses, take that away from the income and we get a value. Hopefully that value is going to be correct. So what we're going, I'm just going to move this line of code to there just to make it easy for myself. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna first of all run it without debugging and see what the result is here. So we're going to say 100, there is my income, make that 30, 20, and 20, and we'll hit the calculate button now, and we've got a remaining budget, A, we can't see it. Um, so that's going to be our first problem, so, um, I think, yeah, let's just fix up that one first of all, then we can look at what the answer might actually be, and in order for us to uh, debug a program, we need to run it, you know, um, have it compiled with debugging. But also what we need to be do then is to rather than to run without debugging, we want to run it with debugging. And then we've got a whole bunch of other functions which become accessible, including like pausing our application, uh, showing an execution point, step over, step into and so on here, and run the cursor. These functions here are also available on the uh, toolbar down here. So you can see that's run without debugging, run with debugging, pause, stop, uh, step over, step into. Now these functions also have uh, shortcut keys. So you can use your keyboard to um, you know, watch the execution of your program. So if you set a breakpoint, uh, the program will stop at that breakpoint and then, you know, you can then use the, let's say the F7 and F8 to start going in and out of functions to see what's happening in your code. Um, the first thing to note will be, well, what's a breakpoint? A breakpoint is a line of code at which the uh, program will stop, you know, uh, and from, and then from which you can then start you know, looking at variables and, you know, continuing execution and so on. A watch, you know, basically allows you to look at the value of something um, in your code, whether it could be a uh, class attribute or it could be a local variable. Um, and then, like I said, also there are local variables. The other place where you will find uh, functions related to uh, debugging is under the view menu here, under debug windows, you've got a bunch of you know um, other windows you can open up like uh, watches, breakpoints, local variables, and so on here. As I said, we're not gonna go into all these windows here because we're just starting off in our debugging journey here. Um, if you want to set a breakpoint, first of all, in the, what I'm gonna call here this margin, um, as opposed to the gutter here, in our um, space over here, if you just click on a line of code, you know, just click on the line, a little uh, red circle here in my question mark, you know, it gets added in and you can then see the whole line becomes highlighted. Also on the bottom here, um, I've, where I've got my messages, watches, message results, etc., I've also got breakpoints here. And you can see the breakpoint that I have set there. So if we were to put a second breakpoint here, then that second breakpoint gets added in. <clears throat> also then down here, you'll find a whole bunch of functions where you can also then add another breakpoint. Uh, you can 
look at the configuration of said breakpoint, you know, and you know, we can rem remove that one if we wanted to, and we're going to say yes. Now, if we do look at the properties of the breakpoint, we can either use a, you know, the spanner and the screwdriver, I think might be there. But here a breakpoint can either be, let's say, just a, what a, a plain vanilla breakpoint where your program will just stop there, or you could make it something conditional. Uh, we're not going to worry about a conditional one. Also, when you have a breakpoint, they can be enabled or disabled. So a breakpoint that is enabled, that when hit will stop, um, but if you do have a breakpoint that you have disabled, you can still have your breakpoint, but it won't be you know, used in the current execution of the program. So um, we will, let's just say accept all these um, settings here. And what we are now going to do is build our program. Now we do have a warning here, so we might as well have a look at that one. And it says a range check error while evaluating constants. Zero must be between one and three, but it's still compiled. So that's a good start here. And we're going to see where our program does go wrong, you know, in terms of that calculation before. So what we need to do now is to run our program in debug mode. And like I said, we do have a breakpoint set when the user hits a calculate button there. So let's type in 100 here, um, 30 and 20 and 20, hit calculate and now let's go into our watches and I do have a couple of watches already set. Uh, one is on income and one is expenses. If I wanted to um, add a, um, a watch on total expenses, I, I'm just going to, in this case, I'm just going to copy that one there hit the plus sign there, paste it into there, and hit OK. And you can see that all of these variables here have no real value yet. They haven't assigned any value because they're all going to be assigned you know, through the function. So here we are now going to um, press the F8 button. Now this F8 button will do a step over. And here our income is now 100, so that's a, a good start here. Now we're going to start setting our expenses here and somehow now my income has changed. So now and now my first one's 30, second one's 20 and now we're going to go through this loop here a few times and our remaining balance, well let's see what this value here really is now. So we're going to add this as a, add this as a watch as well minus 55 so we know that's wrong but that's what we're going to see in our program here so we may as well just put this into the right edit field at least now so let us see what we get now our program is our program still running uh, yes it is we've got a little execution stopped over here so if you are debugging your program and you want to um, just reset your program because you have found, let's say, something you want to fix. If you press Control F2, um, that will basically reset your program. And in my case here, I do get a message up because I've never turned it off, to be honest. So um, that's that window you saw there. Now, no point in running the program yet because we've got to work out, well, how did, what happened? How did we get the wrong value? So, we've got our breakpoint again here. And the other part is, now, I don't want to have to, you know, go through that array every time I, um, you know, debug the program here. So, we're going to look at now the run to cursor function as well. So now let's run our program again. And here we are going to type in the 130, 20 and 20. Hit there. And now what we can do is if we hit the F7 key, we are now going to go into that function. Well, actually, let me go back into here. And I'm just going to put a breakpoint here just in case I screw up something. So we are now here. 
and let's go to F8, 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 F8. Now I'm going to go into here, and now we haven't hit the breakpoint yet, so we have gone into the next bit of code there. Now here you can see that the variables are um, not found because we are in a different function to the one that we were in. So because they're outside of that scope, you know, that's why they're going to be there. Uh, so now we're going to do a you know, string to float calculation and we're going to step over that one. So that was F8. And now we will go over there and like I said, we've got a value of 100 here. Again, it's gone to here now because I've got the, um, I stepped over, but because I'm st have a breakpoint set within the code that I am uh, looking at, it will also stop at that breakpoint as well. So now if I click on the breakpoint again, that will turn it off and I can now just press the uh, well, I'm just, so I want it to stop down here next, so I'm just going to now press um, F9 again to keep it running, and now we've stopped there. But like I said before, I don't want to have to, you know, just watch the program go through this loop here. So if I put my mouse, say, on the next instruction that I want to start looking at, then I can use this run to cursor function, and it will just execute until it gets to that line. And now we can um, just let it run again here. And we can see that our value now is minus 35. Or 55, I should say. So basically, um, our problem now is that... I'm going to take this part here out, actually. Something between here and here caused a problem and basically the issue is that this is between 1 and 3 and I've assigned, you know, the um, something to the expenses in element 0 was overriding some other place in memory, you know, that caused the issue between the income and the expenses values. So once we fix up that particular error here, then we can, you know, let's say run the program again. Yeah, that's okay. We've got no utilities. Hit our calculate button there, and now we're just going to let it run, and we'll go back to here, and now we've got 50 and 50 make 100. we got a winner of a program here. Now, in order to us to look at the variables in all so far or to date, we've basically been using watches. The other thing we can actually use are its local variables window. So we're going to leave that program running and I'll just move it over there and now I'm just going to go down to the debug windows and in or look at our local variables window at the moment it's empty so we'll go back to our program here now and we will now hit the we're just going to clear that value there let's change that to 10 and now we're going to hit calculate again so now we are in this, the button clicks event handler, and we can see what all the variables are that are within, that are visible at the moment. So we've got the self, which is the form. We've got the sender, which is the button object. We've got our constant. We've got our um, index for our for loop, our expenses, income, and so on. Our expenses is also an array here. So you can actually, you know, expand and collapse that if you need, want to. So that now that when we're in here, I'm going to move this window over a bit, or might resize it at least, so we can see both spaces at, w at once. You can see here that the now values have changed to reflect, you know, what's in the local variables here. So we've got here 30, 20. Now at the moment, we've got this odd value in expenses because it has no value yet. And now utilities is now 10, which is that third value. And our total expenses is some random value again. It's now equal to zero. And you can now see it incrementing based on the uh, expenses that it was accumulating as, as it went. 
remaining balance now, some obscure value. It now has a real value. So this value here is the difference between our total expenses and income. And that is what will go into the, what we're going to do now, we're just going to run this again to get out of there. And we can see what our uh, remaining income is for, let's say that period. So let's suppose now we want to either A, change something or do something to our program. What we can now do is press Control F2. And that will, you know, reset the program from debugging. Get this message here about the execution stopped. And I can say, yep, that I wanted to do that. Um, and go on from there. So rather than having to add watches for the variables you want to watch, which in the, again is good for the um, things like attributes, which are outside of the local procedure, uh, watches are good for that. But if you want to just see the what the local variables are at the time, then use that local variables window. Uh, let's go back into our view menu here. And what else? Oh yeah, now if you don't have, let's say, the uh, watches window or breakpoints down below, then you can easily bring them up with these, you know, um, menu items here. Now, if we were to, now let's just run the program one more. We're just going to see what happens now. Can I change the value of a local variable here? So let's make that 20, 20, and 20 and hit calculate and F8. So now we see our income is 100, but what if I wanted to change it to something else? So what I can do here now is let's go to there, into there, mod evaluate and modify. And I'm now gonna give it a new value, make that 50. We've now started on the road to debugging programs. We're not, like I said, looking at things like assembler um, or otherwise. Uh, but to be able to utilize these functions in here to know what, you know, stepping into does and or stepping over, um, stopping our program like control F2, how you can bring up these breakpoint windows. Um, so you can, like I said, just click in the uh, even while the program is running, you can um, add a breakpoint. Uh, we've got you can know how to now look at local variables as well, which now gives you the tools to be able to work out where things have gone wrong that you can change, that you can correct, so that you have a correct function, a program that functions correctly. So that's about it for this particular video here. I hope that you were able to get something useful out of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe um, and to hit that notification bell to get updates. And until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then. Bye.